Hello everyone and welcome to another Mondays with Michelle video. This week we'll look at a number of websites that can help us understand the life of our coal mining ancestors. We'll look at some coal mining museum websites, research guides, and various online databases. Let's get started. Since I had been researching some Rentons who were coal miners, I decided to do some investigation into coal miner resources. So one of the things that interested me was particularly the role of the children that worked in the mines. So I found this website, which was rather interesting, and it's geared, it's more like an education website, which as I've commented before, I actually like those because they break things down into very clear categories. So if you notice for this website, and I will have links to all of these in the handout, um, this is the what jobs did children do underground. And what I found useful was it really does a good job of explaining a lot of the terms that I saw referenced in different articles that's talking about the different roles, the getter, the hurrier, the trapper. They've also got links in this table of contents on the left to articles and information on the Royal Commission to investigate the situation at the mines and specifically with children. There's a section that talks about health, They've got an interesting section that gives you an idea of the wages of miners. And then they've also got a section on school, on accidents. So I found this website was really good for giving a lot of background information. I did look at the National Archives and they do have in their classroom resources section, they've got this Victorian Lives collection and there was one that was children in the mind. So there is a little bit of information here. And what's interesting is they've got some transcripts of interviews done with some children who worked in the mines. So there's some information, this was from the Royal Commissions. So this one, for instance, was 1842. They interviewed some children who worked in the mines. So that was interesting. Now, the National Archives does have a research guide for mines and mining. And there is a lot of information in this guide. My only comment would be, most of the information, at least all of these different collections that I clicked on, most of the information is not available online. The records haven't been digitized. It's still worth looking at what they have, but you would need to either visit the National Archives or get someone else to do the research for you. So this guide is fairly extensive, whether you want maps and plans of the mines, the records of the companies, the coal board maps, there's all kinds of information here, details of accidents, miners welfare, so there is quite a bit of useful information here. Now, I did click on some of those different collections. So this is an example. I clicked on the HO45 records, which were covering mine accidents. So it does give you a good idea of what they have. So if you click though on one of these items to see the details, you notice it says the record has not been digitized. <clears throat> 
I then found a couple very useful articles and I'll just scroll up to the top here. One of them is from Who Do You Think You Are magazine on how to find coal miners in your family. And it provides links to a large number of useful websites, most of which I will be showing you today. So different museums, different societies, different websites devoted to the mining industry. So that's a useful resource. I found this particular society, the Northern Mine Research Society, and it says they're dedicated to the preservation and recording of mining history. Most of the useful resources I found were under this information tab. So we've got information on the types of mines. They've got some online mapping tools. And you notice there's information on mining accidents. They've got a number of record resources and various other pages here. So I'll just show you quickly. I have a few of the tabs bookmarked here. So this is an information page on the collieries of the British Isles. So it's showing all kinds of details. And if you go to the bottom, it's got a list and you can click on one of these maps and expand it and actually click to view the details. This is actually an online map of mining accidents. So if you click on one of these red dots, it gives the details of the site and the year the death toll, and the cause. So I thought that was quite interesting. And that was under information, online mapping, mining accidents. That's what I went to to get to this particular page. I also looked at information records. And that brought me to this page. I selected Yorkshire. So with this particular page, if you scroll down and click on a particular place, it's going to give you some idea of the records that are available. And as far as resources, they do have a mining history database. They've got accidents and disasters. So if we click on that, it's got, again, a lot of information. And you can click on Yorkshire and see the list of accidents and the details on the particular situation. So that was all really interesting information. And a lot of the information on these mining accidents was originally compiled by Ian Wynne Stanley, who was well known for having a huge database of mining accidents and disasters. Now, he used to have his own website with all this information, but unfortunately he had, it says 2002, he had a heart attack. So he stepped away from maintaining his own website and he has donated his information to several organizations, one of them being this Northern Mine Research Society. So you will find a number of the sites I show you today do have portions of his information. So if we now look at Ancestry, the reason I wanted to show you the Ancestry website is right now 
I'm not logged on using a paid account, but they do have this collection of coal mining accidents and deaths. If you scroll down, they show details of the collection. And there is a note saying that the basis of this particular collection is the work that Ian Wynn Stanley did. Now, what I found is it's worth going on to Ancestry and doing a search because when I searched on Renton on some of the other websites I'll show you, nothing came up. But if I search in Ancestry under this collection, there were four Rentons and it could be that the coverage of this database extends further than the coverage of the database on the other websites because you'll notice the information here is going all the way to 1951. But I just wanted to point out it is worth taking a look. Now this is the site that has the bulk of the information that Ian Winstanley collected. <clears throat> and it's the Coal Mining History Resource Center. So the website has been taken over by Rayleigh's. And I did find there are a number of the links that do not seem to work, but it has a vast amount of useful information. So if we look, for example, at each of the tabs, we've got location maps. We have an accidents disaster. There's all kinds of documents. And there's also a photo gallery. So we'll take a look at each of these resources. So if we take a look at what's under location maps, you'll see when you click on location maps tab, you get a table of contents on the left. What we're looking at right now is the A to Z list of mines, but you can click on one of these links and see the related mine. Now they've got every one of them except the Northeast Division. Like if I click on Northwest Division, we're seeing part of Huddersfield, Rochdale, Bolton. If I click on Northeastern Division, it bumps you back to the home page. So either that link isn't working or they don't actually have a map linked in for that particular site. Now, if we go to the accidents and disaster tabs. This one probably has the information that is of interest the most. Unfortunately, this search field does not work. If you type in anything, it just bumps you back to the home page. But they have given you the PDF files, the reports for all of the mining disasters. So if you click on one of these links, what you will see is the report of all the disasters. So we see the Rothwell, Hague, Victoria Pit in Leeds, and you get the information of the people who died and the circumstances of the accident. So it's unfortunate that the database itself does not seem to be active, but you can get at the information by looking at these particular files. And if you click on literature, you can see all kinds of different information. This is a day in a miner's life. There are the commission reports for different places. There is poetry, books on mining history. Now, some of the links, as I said, don't seem to be working properly. You notice when I clicked on the books, it kind of puts down their menu structure. So <clears throat> there are a few quirks with the website. And lastly, the photo gallery. Again, I clicked on people. So you select a particular item, 
and it will show you the photos that they have set up. That's a useful resource. Now, this particular website I thought was really interesting. Again, it's got a lot of coal mining history information. It has details on coal mining disasters. It's got stories, pictures, memories. The heroes section is really interesting. I wish they had left the table of contents on the left, but you can either go down alphabetically looking at particular surnames or you can just scroll through or not surnames, sorry, it's the names. It looks like it's the names of the collieries. But you can read about the individuals who were awarded medals basically for gallantry, bravery, for their actions when there were these accidents in the mines. So that's an interesting section. Another organization is the National Union of Mine Workers. They have a website that has some interesting resources. You can read different speeches. They also have a really good photograph collection. So that can be interesting. And I found a number of coal mining museums. This one was quite interesting and it's located, if we scroll down to the bottom, it's located in Wakefield. So this is a Yorkshire mine, West Yorkshire, but still Yorkshire, the Cap House Colliery. And there's a number of things on this website that are of interest. So even if you are not able to go visit in person, they have this interactive map of the site. And if you click on the Explore Here link, you come to this enlarged version of the map. And any of these colored dots, the red, blue, and green, and purple dots, if you click on those, so if I click on this red dot, it will bring you up a little information blurb where you can see some more details. So if I click down here on the green dots, those are the bird hides. If I click on this building, it's the pony discovery stable where you can meet the pit ponies. And basically, you can just kind of click your way through to see what some of the areas are. And over here in the blue section, the technology gallery. So again, I thought that was an interesting resource. They do also have under their news items, They've got this collection, Voices in the Coal Shed, so different articles about different aspects of coal mining. And this was one of them, Court of Inquiry. So this was someone talking about the dangers in the industry and some statistical details. They do have a remote learning section. And although most of it is geared to young children, I clicked on the remote learning link and downloadable resources. There are a few things that are useful. So they've got an information sheet on the Oaks Colliery disaster. There is a useful glossary, a mining vocabulary. So as I said, even though if you scroll through, a lot of this information wouldn't be appropriate for what we're looking for, but there are a few things, extracts from the 1842 Commission, that might be of interest. So I thought it was worthwhile mentioning that link. And for those of us who can't go there in person, 
if you search on Cap House Colliery video tour, there is a video that you can watch on the on that coal mining museum. So that's useful. Now the next few links I show you are just different coal mining museums in different areas. The Durham Mining Museum has a vast amount of information as you can see from this page and from the links on the left, these clickable links. So one of the sections they have is this memorial roll under mine related deaths. So if you clicked on the memorial roll, you come to this page and they've got all the information filed alphabetically by surname. So you would click on a letter of the alphabet. So I clicked on R and it brought me to this page which is showing all of the information they have for people with the surname of R. And if I click on the person icon, so if I click on one of these heads, I will get to see their individual biography page. If I click on the M, the memorial, I will get to see the memorial or the mines inspection report. So there's an awful lot of information in here. And I clicked on one of the entries. And this is what they have for Charles Redmond. So they have a picture. They've got some details. It says the colliery he worked at. So you could click on that and find out more about the colliery. and some information about where he's buried. So a really interesting website. And as I said, if you click on the colliery, you'll come to an information page. This is the one for Butternall Colliery. So for those of you who have ancestors who are mining in Northumberland, Durham, this website has a lot of useful information. The Peak District Mines Historical Society is another useful website. It has a mining museum, there's various resources and searchable databases, some of them online. So when I looked at what was available, they have newspaper cuttings that you can search. And I searched on the phrase accident and it came up with these particular articles. I then looked at what did they have for databases. So I went to resources, searchable databases, and I got this information page. So they've got quite a few different items. And I was interested in looking at the census records and at their list of mining engineers. So if you click one of those items, this is the list of mining engineers. It brings me to this database. And there is a difference in what you can see, whether you are a non-member or a member of the society. And this information page, which I'll now show you, gives some details. If you scroll to the bottom, it does tell you what uh, you're limited to when you search as a non-member. But again, a lot of useful information on that website. They also have some publications. So you can see here some of the information and articles that you can download. Now, if you have coal miners in Wales, there are two really great websites. This one here uh, that says Coalfield Web Materials at the top. This website has some really useful items on it. I clicked on themes and that 
basically brings you to kind of a curated tour of the website. You could click on any one of these categories and see more information. The other Welsh website that I found useful is the Glamorgan Archives, and they've got quite a bit of information on colliery disasters and other coal mining related resources. So that's another good website. Not to leave out Scotland, we have the National Mining Museum of Scotland, which has all kinds of resources. You can find out about the um, actual tour. There's also various collections. You can find out about their online collections, their projects. If there's research, you can find out the kinds of research that they're able to do. So there's all kinds of information pages there. And there's another website, the Scottish Mining website, which has mining accident section, information on the Children's Employment Commission, glossary of mining terms. So similar resources to what we saw on some of the other websites. So if you have Scottish miners, those websites might be of interest. And just wrapping up, don't forget to look for videos. So the BBC did a series when British coal was king. So what I'm showing you here is I just googled the name of the series, but it's coming up not only with the four parts of that series, but you notice it's also giving me all kinds of other coal mining related videos. So don't forget to do YouTube video searches when you're looking for information. And the last thing I'm going to mention, don't forget to go into Google Books. So I typed in Google Books, went into Google Books and searched for coal miner ancestors. And it gave me this list of books. And what was nice when I clicked on the different links, a lot of them have previews. So what we're looking at right now is the tracing your coal miner ancestors. And what I like is it's got 92 pages of preview information. This particular book is called Coal Miners. And if you look at the table of contents, it's got portraits and profiles, women and children, underground, strikes and lockouts. So if we look at portraits and profiles, there's all kinds of great pictures. This book here, Yorkshire Mining Veterans in their own words. This was really interesting. This is interviews with particular miners. And these were born before 1910. These ones were born between 1911 and 1920. So if you click on an entry, you get the picture and you get the details of the interview. So that's interesting. And the last book I looked at was this one, Victims of the Oaks Colliery Disaster. So the author, Jane Ainsworth, had ancestors who worked in that particular mine, and she decided to write a book. And she's included research so that would be really interesting if especially you had an ancestor who died in that disaster. It would be interesting to see what information is in this book about them. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Don't forget to download the handout. You'll find the link in the video description at the bottom of your screen. You may need to click show more to see the handout links. Thanks for watching.